you can't hear him. I would appreciate that. Um, it's good? Okay, the producer says it's good. So, Bishop, how are you this fine morning? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. <laughs> I'm looking at you. <laughs> Can you see me? <laughs> I can see you. All right. Praise God. Sorry about that. Like I said earlier, we've had some difficulties trying to get things going this morning, Bishop. I tell you, the devil is busy. He's never Thank sleeping. You, but we give him no glory because we're going to have a great show. And what is so awesome about it, so coincidence, if people would say, I don't believe in coincidences. Today's subject or topic matter is how to handle challenges appropriately. Amen. <laughs> I'm, I'm really not sure about the appropriate part, but... Um, I would, I, or I would say how to handle challenges while staying in character because we want to be who we are all the time. You know, the Bible says, uh, don't, don't, don't worry. Don't be anxious about nothing. You know, pray about everything. Don't, don't, don't worry. In other words, if you believe in God, believe also in me, trust me. So, but Bishop, yes. is there a right way to go through a challenge? Or is it just a blame game? Because I, I can hear a lot of people say, oh, yeah, I know why this problem happened, because of you, and this happened, and that happened. But seriously, how, not just a Christian, but how should everyone, particularly saints, handle challenges? Well, blaming someone, even though it may be someone's fault, is not going to bring about a solution. Uh, the, the, the biggest thing for a person to do is first identify what the situation is, identify what the challenge is, and then be able to uh, appropriately, with the right attitude, uh, realize this is what I, I take the next step forward. Uh, a challenge, as we've talked about it many times, is simply when crisis meets opportunity. And so crisis meet opportunity, then we have uh, the opportunity to really uh, make a difference. And, and I think that's what we have to understand. What a challenge is you're in crisis, but then it's an opportunity uh, to allow God to move in your life. Wow. You're saying that a challenge is an opportunity to let God do what in our life? And let God uh, handle uh, your situation. Uh, a great friend of mine once uh, in a conversation said to me that the way he goes even about his everyday life, he prays like it depends all on God, but he works like it depends all on him. And so it, 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 it moves up to with the right mindset and the right attitude begin to realize that this is though this is difficult though this is frustrating but it's an opportunity for God uh, to move in our life just uh, take for example uh, the blind man mm -hmm. so he's been blind his whole life uh, but now this being blind really he learned how to live blind but it was getting frustrated all right and so uh, when he met the Lord, uh, he had an opportunity. The, the man that bought the pool of Bethesda, amen, uh, he had an opportunity. You know, and let's deal with uh, the, the, the blame game. Uh, when the man that was blind, when the, after he, uh, the disciple asked Jesus, who seen this man or his parents? Bishop. Born blind. Bishop. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to cut you off, but I need you to stabilize because wherever you are right now, your phone is cutting up a little bit. Well, I can hear it, but I'm, I'm sitting still. Okay, well, I'm sorry. Then it must be on my side. I was listening to the reception, so I apologize. Go ahead. No, no problem. It's just I'm, I'm, I'm sitting still, and I can hear this that clashing, but I don't know what it is. Okay, that's fine. I'm, I apologize. Are the, are the phones uh, going to be working there at the studio? They're, they're not. Studio? They're not. The phone's okay. not working. That's the whole problem why I got you on the speaker. Amen. Well, again, uh, maybe if I turn it down a little bit. Amen. 
man. Again, uh, this is the situation where the man that was born blind he said, who's sin? This man or his parents? And Jesus said, nobody did. It was that the glory of God uh, might be revealed uh, in this situation. And so that's what we have to understand. Okay. Okay. Now you touched on a couple of points right there. I want to go back to the example of the man that sat at the pool for 38 years. Uh -huh. Now that man was a beggar. They brought him to beg, uh, taught him to beg, encouraged him to beg because that's how he made his living by begging for at that pool for 38 years. And he had an excuse to say that every time he got ready to move when the angel came to touch the water, because whoever went in, they would begin. They would be get healed by getting into the pool. So he, his excuse was he didn't have anybody there. And by the time he got there, because he was lame, someone had already jumped into the water. So, so, so help me with that illustration a little bit. Well, he was he was it's in that situation. He was in a situation that uh, he had no control. Over where he was, mm -hmm. he had no control over the situation, and uh, somebody always there was no one to put him in. Someone brought him there, uh, but there was no one to take him off the way. And right, that's something that a lot of us deal with. We deal with the we get aggravated, and I've been aggravated. I've been frustrated many times where I needed help. Uh, we needed help, you know, even. Say with the things that we want to do with the broadcast, with True. the uh, radio, with the television, and other things, and they're not there. Right. Uh, you look for them and you can't find them, even though they made a promise that they were going to be there, and they were going to support you, and they're going to help you. And you find out later that they're missing in action, and you maybe don't hear from them again until they need something. And so this is this man's situation. This is this man's uh, um, situation. So what happens is the Lord came by. And, and here's, here's the thing we've got to understand. That there is hope even when you don't have help from others. You can have help from him. Come on. You can have help from him. The Bible said he's present help in a time of trouble. You know, people used to say all the time, hold on, help is on the way. Uh-huh. And I used to say that until one day the Lord stopped me from asking me, why do I say that? Uh, and I said, Lord, well, you know, I'm, uh, I'm holding on until things change. Say, what are you holding on to until things change? That's what I'm saying. I said, well, Lord, I'm holding on to you. He said that I'm not on the way. I'm here. He said, I'm a present help in the time of trouble. I presently want to do something for you. And so many times we're stuck with what has failed in the past. In the past, we haven't had anybody to to uh, uh, put us in when the angel comes down the truck of water. But he said, I'm a present help. The angel, you don't have to wait for the angel to come trouble of water. All you have to do is trust me now. And so uh, this is our reality now. The past is the past. But we have uh, realized the Bible says now faith. Is All right. Things for He's ready to do something for us right now. Okay, so that seems to be the missing ingredient is our faith because faith is an adjective. It's an action word. It's yeah. not sitting and waiting. It's a. It's being. It is a doer. Amen. Faith is a doer. So, so now we gotta look at. I won't say look at the situation, but to really just see what is behind the situation and why we're not allowing our faith to mature. Because if we're going to talk about it, I want to bring one more person on the scene, okay? I, I want to bring one more person on the scene in regard to getting the understanding about our faith, our trust, and the importance of the word of God in our everyday life, not just those 911 prayers that people like to pray, including myself when trouble comes knocking on the door. I have prayed some now. Lord, if you just get me out of this, I'm going to, mm-hmm. I've been there and done that. Now that I know better, I know to do better. But what I'm saying is this. Let's talk about Stephen. 
being uh -huh. stoned. And this man wasn't doing anything wrong. He was full of the Holy Ghost. They said when they were looking for somebody, they said that he was full of the Holy Ghost. And all he did was begin to preach the good news, the gospel about, about the goodness of God and how that they rejected him. And what happened? He got stoned for it. He got killed. He got murdered. Let's just call it what it was. They yes. murdered him for yes. speaking the name of Jesus. So now, help me with this. And he was a man full of faith. So if, if I'm telling people, oh, I need you to activate your faith, oh, I need you to use, so let's, let's, talk, let's break that down a little bit. Amen, amen. Well, uh, yes, he is a man of faith, but the Bible said to be absent the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes, it was a situation. Yes, it was very uh, frustrating. Yes, it was very aggravating. Uh, but uh, his life was in the hands of the Lord. And so sometimes, you know, it may cost you, or it will cost you. Your faith will get you in trouble, but your faith will also get you out of trouble. Uh, when you look at the situation of Daniel, you look at the situation of Daniel being uh, in a den of lions, uh, you look at the situation of uh, the Hebrew boys being in the fiery furnace. You look at the situation of Moses revealing who he was, that he that that you know he was he refused to be called uh, uh, the son of Fa uh, Pharaoh's sister. Yeah. Uh, you look at all of these situations where people's lives were threatened, where people were put in bad situation. Uh, you look at Jesus uh, declaring he was the son of God. Yes. Uh, you know. You look at Paul, them telling Paul, uh, they say, Paul, if you go back to Jerusalem, they're going to, they, you could you could be bound up and put in jail. And he said, I'm willing to die. I'm ready to give my life for this. And so uh, it that's what faith is. Faith is doing what God said you to do and believing exactly what he says uh, to do. But now you got to believe in the covering. You know, he will cover you. Everybody's not, you know, I'm not just saying everybody go out there and do something and, and, and die and get killed. No, no, I'm no, no, no. You stand on the word of God and you do what God have uh, commanded you to do. But that, but that brings us to first things first. If we're going to, if we're going to, uh, to line it up with first things being first, there has to be a relate. There should be a relationship. Amen. Because as, as the scripture says, but now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. But it is impossible to please God unless you believe that he is God and a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you got to know God for yourself. Amen. Amen. You got to have that covenant relationship with him. And, 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 and we're not talking about... A lot of faith. God told you, he said, a, a, as a grain of a mustard of a seed of faith. A mustard seed is a very, very, very uh, small seed, but it's able to do great things. Amen. It's able to do great things. And the reason that I, I brought up the story about Stephen being stoned for preaching the gospel, as, as you well know, the scripture says, and he looked, and when he looked up, he saw Jesus' face, but Faith allows Jesus to see himself in you. It's the mirror. Amen. That he can see his reflection of you. And, and he was looking at Stephen at that time. And they are, in the scriptures also states that his face looked as, as it looked like an angel. So we do know that he was kept. Jesus did keep him. Yes. He, yes, he was yes. kept. He was under that covering that you alluded to earlier. Amen. So now that I understand about the importance of faith and what is faith, believing in God, believing in his word, and knowing that, 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 that that's the conclusion of the whole matter and getting an understanding how to apply it in our lives. So I know this is a silly question, but I want to ask, is this faith available to everybody? Well, the Bible says every man has been given a measure of faith. Every okay. man has been given a measure of faith. Okay. And, and because
because God has given every man a measure of faith, then uh, you have enough faith to get started. You have enough faith uh, to begin to operate uh, and, and on, on what God has given you. You have enough faith to start, but what happens is your faith needs to be developed. Your okay. faith needs to have um, exercising. Your faith Cultivated. needs to be uh, strengthened. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Talk to me. <laughs> Amen. Talk well, your to faith me. needs to be exercised, your faith needs to be strengthened, and your faith needs to be built up. And you do that in prayer, you do that in fasting, you do that in seeking the face of God, you do that in praying in the Spirit. Uh, the Bible says, building ourselves up on our most, most holy, holy faith, high, yeah. praying in the Holy, holy Ghost. Ghost. So uh, this is a part of what you have. we have to do. We have to pray in the spirit. We have to pray uh, in our prayer language. We Amen. have to go to, those, to, to the spirit of God. The Bible said the spirit itself, the book of Romans, the spirit itself make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. In other words, tongues that cannot be interpreted. Mm -hmm. So these are things that we must do. We must strengthen ourselves. Uh, we must strengthen ourselves in the, in the word of God and we must strengthen ourselves through the power of God. Uh, I, I believe that uh, so many times we are so busy trying to prove to others mm -hmm. uh, that we have faith or that we trust God, that we believe God, uh, that we don't spend time uh, so busy trying to prove to others what we're doing. We don't spend time uh, with enough time with God building mm -hmm. our faith, building our faith, building building ourselves we, we we make the mistake of trying to impress other people come on and when other people uh, criticize us or or put us down or don't believe in mm -hmm, us mm -hmm. and we're so busy trying to prove something to them a lot of times it's out of love a lot of times it's out of uh wanting to see them saved but you have to build yourself you have come to on. build yourself you have to strengthen yourself uh i heard a preacher say years ago uh, it's like this. This is the one, number one of the number one damages of faith. He says that if you're, if the smell of alcohol still makes you want to lift up the glass, you're not ready to go witness the alcoholic. <laughs> you need a complete deliverance. Uh, but if the smell of that alcohol, not only you don't have a taste for it, but the smell of it makes you sick, then you're ready to go and be a witness. Yes, so Lord. A lot of times we get excited, we have the joy, and we want to go and show and tell everybody else how good it is, which is a wonderful thing to do. But when they reject us, we want to prove something to them rather than just getting as much strength and as much uh, power from God that we could possibly get and developing our own self and our developing our own faith. And so that's, that's a lot of... Uh, uh, the situation of what we do uh, when we're trying to prove something to others you know you had people go and try to pick up snakes with their hand Jesus. And, and the reason why he said they should take up serpents is not for you to go out there and play with snakes mm -hmm. the reason why he said they should take up serpents one of the things they would do during that time if they wanted to uh, uh, that was one of the ways of harming a person or killing a person uh, in the Bible, this is one of the things they did in those days. They would put snakes in their bed. Mm. And when the person would go lay down to go to sleep, there's a snake in their bed. So this is this is one of the persecutions that the church would go against. They would try to poison them. All right? And so that's why I said uh, you would take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it would not poison or harm them. It was mm. not for a person to go and drink strychnine. No. Or drink poison just to prove a point. Or go take up a serpent. Or go and do something foolish uh, to try to prove a point. That's not proving that you have faith. That's proving that you're foolish. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, uh, you know, we needed situations. Miracles were for situations. The God for God to move for us was for the situation that we were in. And if we're in a situation where there's no hope or we're in danger... God would deliver us. Amen. And Amen. that's what we needed. That's exactly uh, what we needed to do.
Amen. Amen. He's an ever-present help in the time of trouble. But I, I, I just want to make this really clear. There's two things that he cannot do. He's not a man that he can lie. He cannot lie. And he said he would never leave you nor forsake you. So I know he's not leaving us. It's just that we feel that void because we're feeling so insecure or inadequate at that challenge, at that crisis that we're facing. You feel very um, vulnerable uh, because of it is an unknown factor of how the situation could go. It could go in your favor, and it's definitely, if it's a challenge, it's working against you. But I also see now that that challenge is an instrument to grow you, to mature you. Because when you think about it again, when you really begin to search the scripture, being confident in this very thing, that he that began a good work in you is going to complete it at the coming of God. So what is this work? This maturity, he's working you out to be fully mature. And let's go back over to Ephesians, the third chapter, verses 16 through 20. And he said he wants you to be able to know the length, the breadth, the depth, and the width with all Christians, that you would be able to have an understanding of the world, to be able to be able to give a fitting rhema word at that person's time of need. You've got to be able to look beyond yourself in order to do the work that you have to do. It's not about you. Yes, you are in that situation or that situation is trying to um, invoke your presence, as I always say, because I was not, I didn't ask to come. This just happened. So you wanted my presence now that I'm here. I want to give the solution or the answer that God, that I'm hearing from God. That, that I need to stretch, I need to grow. I need to know that my faith is stronger than this situation. And basically, at the end of the day, your faith has got to be stronger than that situation. Now, when Timothy was talking about don't be um, to pray about all things, he talked about being anxious, he talked about being concerned, he talked about whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is just, what says virtue, what any of these things, if any of these things, think on these things. So we have the power and the ability to train our mind to align the word of God to, to, to speak for that situation on our behalf. Amen. Amen. Well, we have to uh, think uh, positively on the word of God. Mm -hmm. The Bible says set your affections on things above. Right. And not on the things of this earth. Setting your affection on things above simply means thinking like heaven thinks. Come on, kingdom way. Thinking, thinking like heaven thinks. Mm. More, 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 more exactly thinking like God thinks. See, one of the things, uh, and, and I want to deal with this because uh, when things take time. All right. And when we're thinking like man thinks and not thinking like God thinks, okay? Uh, let's use, for example, Abraham and Sarah. Okay. God promised them to have a child. God True. promised them to have a baby. Mm -hmm. And uh, Abraham was about 100 and Sarah was 90. Uh, that seems like a great thing to us, but it's not a great thing to God. Come on. I said one day with God is as a thousand God years. Means. And a thousand years is one day. Okay. So you have to understand, on God's timetable, uh, you know, your life, our life, uh, on God's table, timetable, uh, you know, probably is a couple of hours. Amen. You know, uh, you know, it's not even it's not even a whole day. True. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, we have to think about it. Let's kind of let's kind of make the difference between heaven. Uh, philosophy and earth philosophy. All so right. When Jesus told us to talk to the disciples to pray, he said, one of the things he said was, Thy will be done in earth as, as it is in, in heaven. heaven. Because it's a whole, a total different mindset. All right. Now, we like to say that God told Adam that the day that you eat of the tree, you will surely die. Okay. We like to say that. Uh, Adam, God meant spiritual death and not natural death, mm -hmm. okay? But when God spoke that to Adam, Adam was in the Garden of Eden, and he was not living. And at that time, that was a tree. The reason they got put out of the garden, because that was a tree in the midst of a garden. Uh, that, was, well, not in the but it was next to the 
the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil was the tree of light. All right. And, uh, they were put out of the garden because so they could not eat off of that tree and live in sin forever. Come on. So the tree of life was there. Okay. Uh, in Revelation, the tree of life is, in, is with the Lord now. Okay. Amen. And so the Bible says that the, the leaves off of that tree is good for the healing of a nation. Yes. Adam, God said, the day you eat that tree, you'll surely die. Uh -huh. so Adam was recorded to live 932 years. Yes. So on God's time, that's not, he didn't live a whole day. He spoke that. The day mm. that you eat of that tree, you will die. There were four men, I believe, in the Bible that lived over 900 years. Methuselah lived mm -hmm. the longest. He lived 969 years. So, mm -hmm. therefore, let's look at this thing. It's a totally different mindset. The Bible says, as high as the heavens are above the earth, he says, so are my ways above your way. Your yes, ways and yes. My thoughts above your thoughts. Mm -hmm. So, since I've got heaven's thought pattern and heaven's timetable, is uh, not ours. We must adopt a different way of thinking. Come on. That's why I say set your affection on things above, not on the things of this earth, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Uh -huh. We must now change the way we think. Come on. Then, then we will begin to learn how to trust God and how to believe God and how to have faith in God's word and what God is saying because now we got a different thought pattern. We have a different philosophy. We understand that the way we've been doing things and the way we've been taught to do things and the way we see things in the world and see things on the earth is not the same thing. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. It is, it is simply uh it's simply not the same thing. And so this is what this is where this is where the problem is. We're thinking like we think. We're we're on man's Con Yeah, yeah. You know, God's, finite. You know, yeah. Uh, we say we say God works upside down and we work right side up. But the fact of the matter is, it's probably us. It's, it's us working upside down and not God. I and, never heard that before, Bishop. <laughs> in man, in man uh, to have, you have to take. Hmm. In God, you have to give to receive. Yes. In man. To lift yourself up, the lamb to be exalted, you got to lift yourself up. In God, to be exalted, you have to humble yourself. And Amen. so, it, Amen. It's, it's a, heaven operates on different laws than what we uh, than what we operate in. Praise God. Praise God. That was an excellent uh, analogy, and I appreciate that. And and these scriptures are all coming together. But seek ye first. The kingdom, the kingdom, the God way of doing things. And uh, the things will be added to you. So these things that we need, God has already put in place, but we got to pursue him in order to get the revelation or, or, or to receive. Because pursuing him, you're going to receive something. You're going to receive some peace, first of all, because in the presence, you're going to get some joy, rather, because in the presence of God, there's, there's some joy there. You're gonna get some. You're gonna get some joy just by seeking His face. There's something that you're gonna be on the receiving side. So that definitely goes back to what you were saying about with God, you're gonna receive, and with man, you, <laughs> He's trying to take. He wants to take. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, I I understand that part, but I just need just a little bit more help. <laughs> Just a little bit, just a little bit more. Help my unbelief. Because I believe, wait, now let me finish. I do believe, but I don't know if he's working for me. Yeah. I know that sounds silly, but people tell me that all the time. Well, there's another element to it. Okay. That we really haven't understood. And by you saying that, this is something God began to deal with me what, on yesterday. Okay. The devil does attack our faith. Mm hmm But he does not take on our faith all the time. Sometimes he attacks our faith by attacking us in another area, and that is in our patience. Woo, Jesus! The Bible says in our patience, 
do we possess our soul? Mm-hmm. So when he attacks your patience, then uh, your faith, the Bible says if you faint during adversity, then your strength is small. You know, mm-hmm. we'll reap in due time if we faint not. Mm-hmm. He will cause us to do the same thing that to be people of flesh like Esau was. What did Esau do? Esau says Esau knew and understand that he had a birthright. Mm-hmm. His faith in his birthright did not uh, diminish what had diminished was his patience to wait for it. Because he said, what good does my birthright do me now if I perish with hunger? In other words, he was tired. He was weary, okay? So what happens when your faith, when your patience is attacked, when you get tired of waiting, you will forfeit that which you believe is going to happen. Because, you know what, you know, and I said, and All I right. told God this, and it ain't been that, it's not been that long ago that I told God this, that, you know what, Lord, I'll be like the Old Testament saint, the one that died in faith. In other words, knowing that it was coming, knowing that the Messiah was coming, knowing what was going to happen, but they didn't live to see it. Okay? Jesus. I didn't want no more promises. I didn't <laughs> want no more lies. Why? Because I was tired. I was physically tired from being so busy and all the stuff we were doing, and I was weary of the disappointment that my expectations were so high and then being taken out from, and then the rug being pulled out from under me when you realize there's nothing to it, that it was just a bunch of garbage, that it was just a bunch of prom- false promises that were not going to come to pass, when you realize all that. So you get tired. My patience began to get weary when I had heard lie after lie, uh, misstatement after this misstatement, uh, deception after deception, and being busy and been doing so many things myself that it began to wail. So my patience is what took a hit. My patience was what was punched in the gut. And my patience began to say, you know what? You're tired of waiting on this. Just give up on it. Even though you know God is going to do it, you don't know when. It might be another year. It might be another two years. It might be another five years. So do you want to wait that long? Do you want to fool with that? This is what happened uh, with, with Abraham and Sarah. Abraham, when God made that promise, Sarah says, look, here's my maid. Because I'm already barren and I'm getting older. So you take her. Mm-hmm. You take Hagar. And you go in the room and, 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 and with Hagar and get Hagar pregnant. Mm-hmm. And all they did was created by giving up. They All they did was created an enemy for themselves. God, God was obligated to bless uh, uh, Ishmael because that was Abraham's seed. But he said, "In Sarah is going to be the one to produce that child for you. Sarah is going to be the one to have that. So again, their patience, their patience was worn. Okay, how long am I going to have to deal with this? I'm tired of waiting. On this. I, I'm, I'm too, I'm too old for this. I mean, I've said that. You said I'm too old for this." I'm too old to be struggling like that. I'm tired. When is my ship going to come in? You know what? This is what I'll do. I'll lay all that other stuff aside, and I'm going to just do this, and I'm going to save, put a little money here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I'm not even worried about all that. I'm going to be comfortable. And our patience, the lack of patience will rob you of the promise of God. Because it's not that you don't believe God can. You're not even that you believe God will, but you get tired of waiting for it. And say, you know what? I'm tired. And this is why the Bible tells us, and Paul would not have said this if we were not going to be faced with this situation. Be not weary in well-doing, for you will reap in due time. What is due time? God's time. Not our time. God's time, because he has a purpose, he has a plan, and he has a reason why he's making us wait for it. Well said. Well said. Well said. Thank you for being so transparent, 
Bishop. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I can't fight against the truth. That is the truth. So help me God. That's the truth. You get tired, Bishop. You get tired. Okay. So what I see on the spiritual side is this, that a challenge is basically a test. Yes. I hate to admit it, but I have to, I have to own up to it. A challenge is basically a test. And it's going to test a lot. And it is talking about your patience, but is your, again, to come back and, so, and to solidify that the word of God is the final authority over our life, period. Amen. And that there is no weapon that is formed against you that shall prosper. Now, I look at that a whole lot of times in a whole lot of ways. It didn't say that the weapon would not be formed. He said it would be formed, but it wouldn't prosper. Yeah. It wouldn't prosper. It's not going to destroy you to do what it was sent to do. But that's why the scripture again is telling us, but we know all things work together for our good. God is in his infinite time and wisdom. It's, it's, I, would, I won't say just, just a test, but it's preparation for the blessing. What, what, what did, and I can't tell you what every blessing's going to be. Everybody's, he's promised different things to different people for the purpose, for getting back into the plan. And again, we got to know what our purpose is in order to line up with the plan besides having a relationship with God because we are all here for a purpose and a set amount of time, appointed time to fulfill the vision that he has for our life. So it's just time for us to get back, as another one of our good friends texted us Sunday and reminded us in the Second Chronicle. It, my people, which are called by my name, if they would pray, seek my face, humble themselves and pray, seek my face, seek his face, not your will be done, but his will be done. We got to get back to that, that basic 0101 theology to seek God, to be a God chaser, to find out what he needs for us to do. That's got to be a priority in our life, especially when you are facing challenges and the challenge is great. You need to have two twins on your side, goodness and mercy. You need to have your angels that are watching out for you as you go down the street. You need to know that you know that you know that God is on your side and don't give up. Don't throw in your faith. What other, um, excuse me, Bishop, I was trying to see the time. Um, what other ingredients can we add to pursuing God. How can we, how, how will he know that our faith is ready or it's done, the cake is done in the oven? How, is there any signs that your faith is working? I know we're not looking for signs, but it's people, but we should know that something is working. How will that person know that their faith is working? Well, I believe you will have an assurance in your heart. You have an assurance in your spirit. I think the main thing is we will establish ourselves into knowing uh, like Daniel did. Daniel, the Bible says he turned his head, uh, he, he, he lifted up his windows and he prayed like he did before, mm -hmm. as any other time before. Why? Because he knew he had, he, he knew he had a comfort. You know, the, the, the Hebrew boys said it like this, uh, O King, O King. Uh, we're not careful to answer you in this matter. For the God that we serve is able to deliver us out of your hand. Mm -hmm. But if not, we're still not going to bow. And when we get that understanding that, uh, hey, devil, I'm still not bowing. <laughs> that 
that's that's when you start learning mm-hmm. who, what you're really made of. Okay, yeah, it's it's gonna be it's difficult on me. Yeah, it's tough on me. Yeah, uh, there's some problems. Yeah, there's some situations. But guess what? I'm not I'm not bowing. So, I'm not I'm not bowing yeah. to your mess. I'm not bowing to your Come confusion. On. Come on. I'm not gonna allow you to do. Uh, I'm not gonna allow you to, to deter me from what God have called me to do because it's my assignment. It is my purpose. And you just gonna have to get over it. And All right, I like get that. Over it is his problem. I like that. I like that a lot. So, in other words, as I do with my paraphrasing, you gotta learn how to fight, y'all. <laughs> yeah. 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 You gotta learn how to fight. Hallelujah! You gotta oh, learn. To stand, stand, stand there on, yeah, yeah. It's t- that's that's where that perfecting come from. That's where that maturity come from. I mean, you know, some of us as we were kids before we got delivered, they were fighters. I I, got, I marveled at one preacher. I love this prophet, and he says, "Thank God for deliverance, because I would knock you out if I wasn't saved." <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. Don't say. Come on with that. Because you don't. You, you know, you, yeah. It, 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 it's a choice <laughs> mm-hmm. not to do uh, the wrong thing. And, yes, and it I, is. That's, and we, that's what we've got to understand. And that's what God applauds. And, and, and then, too, God is looking for something. Come He's on. looking for something. And I've talked about this on the program before. Well, tell and me again. For those that haven't seen it, uh, I want to bring that out again. When the Bible said we are to be tried, Joe said, when I'm tried in the fire, I'll come forth as pure gold. Mm-hmm. Okay, what does that mean? Ah. That when a, a a refiner has to work all the impurities yep. out of gold in order for it to be fit. So uh, how does he know it? Regardless of what the machine says, the machine could be acting up and say, oh, he's ready. Mm-hmm. But the only way he could know that it is ready is that he goes to it and walks up to it and sees his reflection right when he looks at his reflection he knows that it's ready mm-hmm. and so therefore when god looks at you the way to know and when god's ready and we talk again about timing when god looks up and sees his reflection because if you're not going to handle things the way he wants you to handle them mm-hmm then he can't promote you in that position because it's going to overtake you. All All right. Right. You're constantly questioning why uh, am I dealing with this? Or why do I have to constantly deal with the same thing? Or why do I have to constantly deal with the same person, the same kind of person? As long as you're questioning that, then God cannot promote you because you don't yet know that is your assignment. And when you know that it's your assignment, then you approach it differently because that that type of spirit that type of demon is what god is putting an anger in you about he's dealing with because the person needs freedom from it and you're not dealing with the person that's that demon that you got to get angry at it's that you got that right that you got to get frustrated at and begin to take the steps to get somebody delivered come from on that particular devil from that particular demon, and so when you, when God walks up and looks at you, and you and, and and says, "Oh, they know now that I have called them and I have anointed them," yes, to to to, to deliver people out of this because think about it, Jesus came to seek and save them with the lost. He came to die for our sins. Mm-hmm. But the first thing he had to do is to show that he was the Messiah. And to show that he was the Messiah, he had to go in and bring deliverance to those and be an example to others on how to be. Had to be an example to others on how they, you have to attack the how you have to work the ministry. What Jesus came and did, he worked the ministry for the apostles. 
he showed them how to work the ministry. Well, let's go to the book of Ephesians 4 and 13. Let's talk about the fivefold ministry. Yeah. Five and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the uh, uh, building up of the ministry, of the ministry, the building up of the body of Christ. What was he doing? What do we do as, as apostles? What do we do as prophets? What do we do as bishops? What do you do as pastors and evangelists and teachers? We perfect the saints. So as we perfect the saints to go out and work ministry, it is, you know, we talk about a sheep beget sheep, but if we don't show the sheep how to beget sheep, Thank you. if we don't show the sheep how to go in and take authority yes. over the devil that they're dealing with, if we don't do like Jesus did when he saw these demons, they lined up people. In the street, they came mm -hmm, because so mm -hmm, many mm -hmm. people were sick. Yes. To the point where Jesus could no more openly enter into the city because so many people needed help. Yes. Okay. Jesus did not say, why do I have to keep dealing with all these sick people? No, he never. What he did, he healed them. That's what he did. He brought deliverance to those that believe. Now, the Bible says in some areas where there was no belief, in some areas there were no belief. He can uh, do no he, miracles. He no mighty miracles in those areas mm -mm. because of the people's unbelief. But the fact of the matter is this. The apostles did the same thing. The Bible said they lined up people in the streets. Hoping that Peter's shadow would overcast over them. And they were healed. And they were healed. They were delivered. And so our mindset has to change. And we have to stop saying, why do I have to, why do I keep dealing with this situation and begin to, begin to dig in, mm -hmm. begin to grip in and say, you know what, I'm sick of the devil. There and you I'm go. I'm sick of seeing these people in bondage. I'm sick of seeing these people, uh, mind tripping on them. I'm sick of seeing these people that never have before mine and begin to speak the word of God and begin to pray the word of God and begin to declare it deliberately. For the people of God that's been bound by the devil. What are we looking at? We're looking at needs. We're looking at people that's been bound. And when we understand we got to deliver these people that are bound, then God can come in and say, okay, they understand now. I see my reflection. Now they're not uh, uh, mad because or upset because they have to deal with the people. Because when God bless you, when God elevates you, you have to deal with ten times more the people that you're already dealing with. Say it's that. On a larger scale now. It's on a massive scale now. All right. See, a lot of people want to be on TV like we're on TV, but they would get on TV talking about themselves. They would get on TV trying to lift themselves up, and God can't open that door for them. God can't put them in that situation because a lot of people want what you have, but they're not willing to do what you do to deal with it. And you know yourself, we have had to deal with a lot of problems. We've had to deal while we're dealing with our own problems, our own struggle, our own situation. We yet have a bunch of other people that we got to deal with. Yes. On a constant basis. So, when this begins to open up, I can't tell you how many requests I get for people, uh, please help me. Please take us under your ministry. Mm -hmm. And, and, and we, we, we build a such and such and such and such, such uh, my sanctuary and we need your help. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I heard somebody, somebody uh, not too long ago was requesting a laptop and they needed so many American dollars. <laughs> To do a laptop. Wait a minute. Hold on. I ain't in the business of buying laptops for everybody. All right. Oh, Jesus. Would you really understand? Bishop, stop. Are you it's killing me? It's a whole nother realm. It's a whole nother realm. <coughs> and so you got to be prepared for it. You got to be prepared for the elevation. Prepared yeah. for the blessing. So when, when you're dealing with a bunch of stuff, you're dealing with a bunch of craziness. And not only that, it's for God is allowing us to see what's actually out there. Amen. Amen, God Bishop. Let you see what's actually out there. When you have to deal with a, a, a lot of uh, problem uh, ladies, a lot of problem uh, women, you got to realize children. there's an issue with the men. Yes, Lord. You have Lord. to deal with a bunch of men uh, or young boys that 
that's that, that, that struggling and trying to prove their manhood. Okay, you got to realize that's an issue there. There's an absence of a man or the wrong influence of a man. Or, uh, in many cases, uh, you have situations where men are struggling with women. Because then now you got to go around and look, okay, there's, a, there's this problem with the women. And then the children are, are, are suffering. The children are going through, okay? You, you're in the research. Is it the children or is it the parent? It's the situation of the parent. So all of these things are simply to give us answers. Amen. And Amen, And we Bishop. find the answers, now we got to go to God, and it's time to pew, peel back. And let's go, let's go fight the devil. Let's go. All right, all right, all right. I hear you, Bishop. Let's go. I'm ready. Gird it up. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time out your busy schedule to be my guest today. I truly appreciate it. I thank you for the wisdom and the knowledge that you shared with us today. God bless you and keep you a thousand times, Bishop Thompson. God bless Amen. you. Amen. Until the next time. Thank Amen. you, all Bishop. Right. Well, I'm <laughs> you didn't let me t you didn't let me plug it, Bishop. You didn't let me plug it. I my guess is gonna be Apostle Tyrone Taylor on Wednesday. Thank you. Bishop, say goodbye, please. All right, goodbye. <laughs> God bless y'all. Thank you. <laughs> I got two minutes. I'm being reached. I got two minutes. Praise the Lord, everybody. I truly enjoy my husband, Bishop Thompson. He is a he's a great delight. He really is and, and a powerful man, powerful preacher, powerful, powerful, powerful. This is Pastor Sadie Thompson, co-pastor of He is Risen World Outreach Ministries, located in the beautiful city of Lafayette, Louisiana. I thank you for sharing the time with me today and with Bishop Albert. You could have done anything else, but you decided to tune in to us. And to my Ustream listeners, yay! I love you, I love you, I love you, and I hope to see each and all of y'all real soon. And remember, Jesus Christ is love, and I love you, and it's not a thing that you can do about it. Bye-bye.